Welcome to another 5-Minute Car Review. I'm Chris, and this is a 2022 Dodge Challenger SXT. The base model V6 with 303 horsepower. Still a Challenger, but is it? It's definitely a muscle car, though. I'll give it that. It does have plenty of get-up-and-go. Um, it's a decent little car. Let's go over it a little bit. All right. So it pulled over, and we're going to go over this bad boy a little bit. Best way I can describe this car is a muscle car, but it's kind of a resto mod. And let me show you what I'm on about, because um, not only does it start with the outside, which I'll show you in a little bit, um, that looks like an old uh, early 70s Plymouth Cuda, but on the inside, they've kind of brought in a lot of the elements from from the 70s, main thing that I noticed was the font and kind of the gauge cluster layout. And uh, we'll show you that. Here we go. This is the gauge cluster layout. Um, you know, you got your tack and then you got your speedometer and you got a little screen in the middle. It, it is kind of customizable. Uh, let's see. And you got your speedometer where you can do, uh, you know, messages, audio, trip info, fuel economy. Oh, fuel economy. What are we doing? 19 gallons, 19 miles a gallon. Not bad for a V6. Uh, I've seen worse. Eh, yep, whatever, whatever. Some info, info. But speedometer is good. Even though you got two, it's always good to have a digital one for quick reference. Um, and you also have these little screens here on either side. Yeah, right there. That uh, also shows some various uh, information, like if your seatbelt's on, for instance, or check engine light, or whatever have you. But the one thing I noticed that uh, really harkens back to the 70s is this font. This font that they got on the uh, the tack and and even on the digital part right here in the middle is, is all very 70s. And they've also got the original 70s Challenger font there. And it's kind of cool. The, the rest of it's sort of modern. It's got their normal uh, yeah, power windows, power locks. Uh, it's got your screen with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Uh, let's see. It's got an eight-speed automatic transmission, air conditioning. Uh, it's got the cruise control buttons right here, phone buttons, you know, and stuff like that. Stuff to navigate your screen and push button start, of course, which is always a winner. Stereo controls are right down here, and your air conditioning controls are right down there. Um, fairly decent sized car. In fact, this car feels exceptionally large when you're driving it. Decent back seats here, a little armrest in the middle. Um, yeah, it, this car is it's it's snug, but it's large, and you really feel it when you're looking out the hood. This hood just seems to go out for miles. It is absolutely vast. Yo, um, you got your uh, your taco holder up here, dome lights. But yeah, it's it's a pretty decent car. The the visibility out the front and sides is actually really really good. Out the back is not too bad either. It's a little smaller, but it's really not bad. Um, but let me let me uh, show you the car so you can see that uh, they really took a lot of cues from the old Cuda. And there it is with the twenty inch wheels. Very cool stuff. And if we step back a little bit, you'll. You'll notice that this car looks straight out of the 70s. It's like a resto mod. Oh, and here's more of the font that I was talking about. Even extends to the fuel door on the outside here. Got this little black little spoiler thing here, which is very, uh, very 70s. Tail lights came out of the 70s. So this was like a, uh, it's, this is genuinely a resto mod. Let's take a look at that uh, V6 engine in there. All right, under the hood, you'll find the uh, 3.6 liter Pentastar V6, and let's show you. Here we go. So this is basically the base engine that uh, Chrysler puts in a lot of their cars. They put it in the Charger, the Challenger, obviously, uh, the Chrysler 300. They also put it in the Jeep Wrangler and the Chrysler Pacifica. You name it, this engine's probably been in it. Uh, 303 horsepower in this one. Uh, it gives you plenty get up and go. It's a decent, decent motor in this application. I haven't had any problems with it. If I had to say there was a downside to this car, it would be 
the fact that it's it's so large. It really is, and it doesn't handle like a well. <laughs> let's just say it's no go kart. Um, God, my hair. I gotta get a haircut one of these days. I'm gonna look presentable for you guys. I just I'm gonna have to do it. Um, but yeah, this car is is not the best handler, but it is a a cruiser. And if I had to compare it to the Mustang, which uh, I did a review of a while ago with the the uh, the EcoBoost four cylinder, similar horsepower, about three hundred ish. Um. I'd say the Mustang was a better car, but the Challenger is a better muscle car, if that makes any sense. Um, you get this car if you want a muscle car. If you want a car that's just a cruiser, it's got some decent power, straight line, awesomeness, and, and, and retro looks. This thing is crazy retro, and it, that's probably one of its most endearing qualities, I'd say. Then you'd get the Challenger. Otherwise, if you just want a better car, something that you can use daily it feels good in traffic comfortable easy to drive easy to park i'd say the mustang at this point is the better car but not everybody wants the car they want the muscle car and this delivers in spades it is very large outside and inside it's comfortable though um the seats are supportive a little firm but supportive um plenty of get up and go v6 is fairly decent i'd say the only gripe i really have about this car other than its size and this is probably directly related to its size is its handling this is just not the world's greatest handling car you guys <laughs> hopefully the camera can stay on this time but let me show you what i'm on about we'll do these turns and i'm not doing them real fast we're going about 26 miles an hour right about now these aren't particularly sharp turns but in these turns, the car can handle it. It just, it feels heavy. It feels like it doesn't belong on a twisty road. It can do it. It just doesn't feel like it wants to. It's no go-kart. It's no BRZ. It's no Mustang. It's no 370Z. Those cars I handle twisties like this with ease and confidence. This one I really don't. Although, having said that, I've gotten up to 35 right now and it still feels heavy and it kind of terrifies me a little bit just because this car is so large and the road is so narrow. And we're cameraing here and it just looks a little curvy too. We are definitely having technical difficulties. But anyway, like I said earlier, this car is the better muscle car. Mustang's the better car. So depending on what you want, depending on uh, your likes and needs and desires, this car, I, I haven't found anything wrong with it. It's been fairly reliable in the short time I've had it. It's, like I said, plenty powerful, plenty fun. It's got all the things you need, none of the things you don't. Uh, the only thing I'd probably do if this were my car, I'd get it in something a little flashier of a color. But, uh, you know, silver doesn't do it for me. <laughs> But anyway, we're going to end this video because I ran out of things to say about this car. Uh, it's, 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 a, it's a car. Oh, one last thing. I did notice on the interior. The interior on this car is actually really nice. Not a lot of hard plastics. There are some around like the gear shift and, and like the, the radio bezel and stuff. But the dashboard itself is this spongy like material. And it's soft and it's textured. And it's kind of neat. I like it. It's, it's a nice little touch. Um... Yeah. So you get this car if you want a muscle car with a retro feel. Simple as that. That's what it's for. That's probably all it was designed for. And of course, it comes with a Hemi V8, which is awesome. And of course, the unbeatable symphony of sound, the Hellcat and the Demon. This car is, yeah, we're only scratching the bottom of the barrel with this one. It goes way more intense than this. But anyway, I'm going to cut the video now. Uh, thanks for watching. Give a like. Give a subscribe. Uh, we'll see if we can get you some more stupid content like this. And I'll catch you on the next one.